So I hope you enjoyed the ride. That was Hive Mountain, which is way over here. And like I said, it's covering that gully right here, or this valley, and some of the back country behind the North Fork Mountain uh, repeater there that we set up. Uh, so way up north and to the west is where the incident command post is. Let's talk to Hogback Ridge, where we have another portable repeater set up to cover the southeast portion of the fire in this general location here. So what would happen is the incident command post will issue a command. He's tuned to command two here because he's too far away to communicate with high mountain air and he's definitely too far away and quite a bit of mountains in between to North Fork and he wants to communicate with the guys down here in this area. So his only link that he has to the operational area is command two on Grizzly Peak. It's a really good high point there. Unfortunately, I don't have any video about it, uh, about it, but I could definitely hit this repeater with a portable handheld. One of these guys from inside one of the tents. And, but the command post itself, the actual operational tent where they all make their plans and everything, uh, they have a little handset, remote handset, that pretty much uh, takes care of that. Uh, it's got an antenna out on the outside here and a little convenient little sort of handset inside the tent where they have full connectivity with the whole operational area if it's all configured right. So he will talk here. He's tuned to Command 2 on Grizzly and Grizzly on the UHF channel which shoot it down to Hogback and simultaneously also to North Fork Mountain and High Mountain at the same time and they will all repeat that same traffic in different VHF frequencies because all these sites have a different VHF frequency so there won't be any interference if they all go off at the same time which they do when one of these repeaters go off they just send the traffic over the UHF link or backbone to the rest of the repeaters so it's going to be one shot to here, repeat, and shot down to Hogback Ridge and it'll talk to all these guys in the south here along with everybody else in the operational area because once, once they hear that traffic that will kind of clue them in to shut up people are talking, get off the channel after all it is a command channel and it's only used for kind of widespread broadcasts where in these individual uh, divisions, Division F, Gulf, Quebec, they have their own portable to portable simplex channels to talk on. And let's just go into radio to radio direct without using the portable repeater because uh, they're in line of sight of each other to do their tactical communications between themselves. So that'll be like me talking to my wife and, and Macy's using our little walkie talkies same concept. Let's, let's take a ride over to uh, Hogback and take a look at what that looks like. You got your helmet on? Come on over, let's go. So this is another portable repeater that we put up here. An old lookout. That's the antenna mask that we put up for VHF. And then a Yagi pointing to the other portable repeaters to link up with them. And make a big loop around the circ uh, the fire itself. So pretty much this portable repeater consists of this Daniels repeater that our uh, linking system. Here you have your repeater the uh, handhelds that the firefighter uses out in the field in the vehicle everything command post then you have UHF both of them together and here's Jeremy the guy who installed it <laughs> so when somebody comes in UHF uh, actually VHF is gonna whip on out 
to 163 and then it's going to whip on out to UHF out to the other repeaters that are out there that have the same setup so you have a larger area to cover that's what it consists of, there's the duplexer the UHF is simplex so it only needs a relay which this module here controls it's all operated with 12 volts DC the batteries underneath there usually we'll double stack it but we didn't bring an extra pair there you have it So that was a pretty good scenic ride. And lastly, we have the interior of the fighter, which we have personnel all throughout this area here. And this is just littered with logging roads and forest roads and all sorts. Uh, and you definitely need a 4x4 vehicle to get there. Uh, and the same concept, you got North Fork covering the interior of the fire area here with in conjunction and overlap with Grizzly hogback and high mountain so let's take a ride over to North Fork and, and take a look at what that site looks like and you'll see a theme with all these sites is repeater sites for maximum range and, and efficiency take the high ground and that's how you will cast 5 watts worth of power and, and get a pretty good amount of uh, a coverage around the area you want to talk in and it doesn't look like in the map there maybe you're familiar with topography maps but it is rugged terrain there and let's see what that terrain looks like but this time I'm gonna have to drive well I hope that doesn't get any worse I don't think so but we're stuck up here if we if it does yeah we had to drive this we didn't have the, uh, the leisure of flying And off to the distance, you see another light chopper there, reconning. I don't think I can pick it up with this. Nice commanding view. Great repeater site installation, but it's a bitch to get, drive up on. And this is our tactical VHF with the UHF link. Again, on North Fork Mountain, Shasta, National Forest. Same deal, just on another hilltop with another frequency. Commanding view of the whole operation. There's burned over there. There's Mount Shasta over there. Craig's Castle. Get a close up of that chopper. There it is, doing a recon mission. All right, back to the class. So this particular disaster was pretty complicated and 
pretty much terrain is what dictated what we would use in the field to get our goals accomplished and having communications with every swinging dick that's fighting this thing and swinging uh, nipples out there too can't forget the girls but uh, that pretty much enables somebody with a regular HT like this to communicate throughout this whole area using repeaters and for beginners uh, like I said when you when you get your ham license or if you're using uh, MURS mirrors or those bubble pack radios that's pretty much what you're what you're dealing with it's a line of sight but for the size and compactness of, of the antennas and everything is the most practical uh, mode of, of, of communication that you will encounter when when you're dealing with tactical communications uh, like I say HF and those other bands are, are not practical in in a boots to the ground situation and that's pretty much the, the whole theme of this video is about what the public safety professionals use out in the field and what they prefer as far as tactical communications in a large 45,000 acre piece of property that's just littered with mountains, valleys, and forest. Uh, one of the most difficult terrains that you, us Americans, will encounter, and I'm pretty sure Europeans and, and other uh, nationalities out there. Now, if you want to boil it down to just a simple setup, let's talk about search and rescue. We got somebody lost in this area right here and this is our closest metropolitan area and we got you know the suburbs around here and this is our major site our major repeater ham repeater site that that pretty much covers this whole area here as far as uh, ham hams go uh, when they do it as a hobby and, and what what have you but uh, one of the first priorities for a ham repeater site is to provide public uh, service to to help out people in need which will be the the uh, the lost individual around here they'll call up a team they set up and it's the same thing incident command structure will take place and uh, they will work closely with the local sheriff's department and, and send some resources out here to see if we can find this guy uh, instead of using a big old network of portable repeaters throughout the area this site here more than likely will be hardwired to commercial power or solar power and this one repeater site will, will become the uh, command repeater to to coordinate activities around the search area and in conjunction with that you'll have tactical frequencies which is simplex radio to radio so the people here could talk among themselves without having to congest the one repeater site that's the link to all the uh, decision makers out here and whatnot and that's pretty much what it boils down to so uh, th the main focus of this video is uh, now that you that you got all these wooks on radios or surplus gear and 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 stuff and and some little knowledge of, of, of how to turn it on and do some basic programming how are you going to go out and use it? I mean, you actually need a community to use it, whether it be your home, your family, or uh, the best way to learn and actually sort of get your feet wet in this and be effective is, is to join a, your local search and rescue team, your local CERT team, civilian emergency response team, uh, ham clubs, actually. Uh, they, they have branches of their particular club that, that deal with disasters and, and, and so forth like that and providing comms for bike races and events and stuff like that. Excellent way to use or to learn practical operating skills in, 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 in communications. And if I wasn't involved with, with public safety and stuff like that, I would definitely be in a search and rescue team myself uh, because it's just fun and you can use the skill. You get out to the woods and, and, and make a difference and learn the craft that, 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 that you're interested in. Uh, so that would be a good way to kind of learn the skills. Uh, when, so when the real thing happens, it will only be second nature and you could pretty much concentrate on, on doing what you really need to do and this get yourself out of that situation. Oh, there we go. Got a tree. 
tree in my way here. Oh man, there's a there's a bunch of stuff there burning. Yeah, I think so too. Get the hell out of here. It's got the potential to go up this this uh, hill.